Hello and welcome back to Kaisreich. Uh, I changed the fleet icons a little bit. So we've got the battle fleet here, and then we've got a secondary fleet, which I actually didn't name. Um, I'll just call it... Uh, I think this is uh, how you spell it. It's uh, This means... Uh, okay, so in Norwegian and German, a lot of Germanic languages have this um, uh, thing that might make you... You know, see some of our, some of our words and be like, "What the fuck?" Uh, we have a lot of compound words. So you know how in Britain a recon squadron is the word recon and then a space and then squadron. Well, in Norway that's not the case. Some words like this uh, means recon squadron, squadron. That is a single word, and it kind of, uh, I guess, if you would give it an equivalent in English, it would be like reconnoitering squadron. But, you know, it's a single word. There's a lot of messed up ones like that in Germany as well. I can't think of anyone right now, but... Um, yeah, I, I, can't th I can't think of any, really. <clears throat> Again, I don't speak Germany. Uh, Ger Ger uh, German, sorry. Uh, like, uh, natively. I only know a few words. Um, yeah, so I changed these guys up a bit. So we got a recon squadron here. And we've got uh, the battle uh, fleet here. Come to think of it, I, have, I haven't actually assigned any of these guys. So we've got uh, Karsten Tank Nielsen. That's a cool name. And we've got uh, Henry Diesen. Edgar Otto. Only one has like a spotter advantage, so I'm gonna give that to the battle fleet because that one actually tries to like find enemies and stuff. And the uh, submarine squadron, it doesn't really matter which one you pick because uh, actually one is a skill two. We'll do this because we might want another battle fleet or something led by someone else. And then I want to have the uh, skill two guy there instead because. Uh, those, uh, like, those traits uh, are more efficient on battle fleets and stuff. I've got to mention it last video, but uh, a, a very helpful Swedish person uh, did say that when I asked for Swedish uh, planes, I, I um, neglected to... Like, I neglected the fact that this one actually just straight up means, uh... But this, is, this one is a Swedish plane. I should have seen the sub there. A Scheller sub J29. Uh, I don't know how you actually pronounce the J in Swedish. Uh, like, on its own. Probably Je. Uh, Je29. Uh, in, in Norwegian. Uh, Tunnan. Tunnan means, uh, barrel in, uh, Swedish. I should have uh, caught it because in Norwegian it's just, uh, Tunnan. It's very similar. So, it, like, the name is literally just the barrel. Also got a question about uh, whether or not I will intervene in the Russian Civil War. Um, I don't think we're ever... I, like, I don't think we're really in a position to do that. We could send volunteers, but... Uh, we don't really have the manpower for that, because we're gonna, going to spend the manpower on just, like, maintaining the troops. So, that's not very beneficial. And also, I still haven't fully settled on a path for our country yet. I haven't, like, decided if, um... I, like, I don't think we're going to go... Socialist, but... We still could. I kind of want to do the Nordic Federation. Which uh, relies on the democratic mandate here. In fact, we should probably go through this one, because we need... Oh, the and yet yeah, the fall of Gibraltar, which of, often happens. Uh, the upgraded panzer sheep are ready. You will gain four heavy cruisers. Excellent. In fact, I wonder if I could... Uh, let's see. You know, we, we should totally do this. Uh, we should uh, swap, or, or I mean, uh, split all these guys up. Have two battle fleets. Peru took two states, Ecuador was annexed, okay. Gallo was annexed. Uh, we, yeah, we'll, uh, we'll, um, we'll do this, second and first. Uh, the reason for that is that uh, this way we can potentially 
have half of the fleet in act uh, like in uh, like being active at the same time and then when they go back to repair the other half can you know still stay active and hopefully that sort of staggage activity is going to uh, work, uh like lessen the um the drain on our fuel reserves which i mean as norway they're going to be limited that seems like the uh, like a logical way of going about it Okay, so we got uh, the cruisers, which uh, have recycled some names. I guess we'll put one in each fleet. But uh, for sure it said we got four cruisers. Where did the other two go? Huh. All right, then. I guess we get two. Wait, I should probably do this as well. Valdres Martian? Never heard of it, actually. I have a, uh, a friend who studies music uh, who probably is very upset with me for saying that. Syndicalism spreads to Burma. All right, so... Possibly these guys form a an alliance. Uh, I'm not quite sure if that can happen. I think it can. Like an Asian version of the uh, uh, of the international. <clears throat> Following a string of poor decisions by the Burmese government, culminating in a, uh, in an order to the Royal Burmese Army to open fire on protesting students and workers. Very. Um, uh, seems like kind of reminiscent, reminis uh, reminiscent of something that happens in uh, in China in our timeline. Uh, the entire country thrown against the royalty. The newly founded National Council, whoa, uh, Council uh, is now forming a new syndicalist government and is uh, reportedly already considering looking or outwards for strong, like-minded allies. What happened here in Nicaragua? Nicaragua and the Socialist Republic of Honduras. Juan Bautista uh, Sucasa, oh, he's got a hefty bio, and we've got um, Venancio Callejas, I think that's how you pronounce it. Venancio Callejas, I think. His two L's is like a, like a J sound, right? I, I mean, I don't speak Spanish. I have a hard enough time learning how to understand all of the different... Uh, oh, learning how to understand most Norwegian people, I guess. So, yeah, uh, I saw one comment uh, advocating for heavy fighters, and uh, I think it was operational integrity, uh, which does seem like a good idea, because then we can bomb our enemies' industries into the, uh, into the ground and hopefully help have that, like... Uh, actually, no, that's strategic destruction. What is operational integrity? Tactical bomb. So this would uh, leverage the idea that we are a small nation, so we're going to improve our tactical bombers so that they can do both the uh, the um, uh, the strategic bombing and the uh, tactical bombing jobs. Because as Germany, like you would have tactical bombers, you would have like, and they would be do maybe port strikes or uh, stuff like that, and then you would have close air support for ground support and strategic bombers for uh you know strategic dis oh uh Scheller Fokker G1 so that seems like a Swedish uh German core like um, joint venture then. Because Scheller is... So this is Scheller sub. Maybe... Oh, so Scheller is probably the Norwegian manufacturer and then these are uh, designs that we bought from them. So sub, we bought uh, Tunan from sub. We bought uh, this one from uh, Fokker. We bought this one from Caproni Italian. Uh, it's got the very like Italian Air, Air Force um, uh, like uh, camouflage. 
very fond of their uh, tiger looking or panther or you know jaguar looking planes marchetti probably also italian Savoy, yeah, that seems like it would be Italian or French then, because Savoy. Uh, Piaggio, Italian, I'm guessing. Caproni again. Gloucester, that's British. Uh, Lockheed, that is uh, American. Sub. Another Piaggio and North American. English Electric Canberra. That This might be uh, British or it might be Australian. I'm not, I'm not sure. And Vickers Valiant, that is uh, British. All right, well, uh, we're going to need maybe industry. No, it's not ready to go. Uh, ready to go yet? Ready to go? Ret? Uh, yeah, it's not ready to go yet. <coughs> what we could do is, because uh, we have basically no chance of squaring off against the navy of Germany or Britain. We obviously aren't going to do that. Uh, we're going to pick one and be on. Like we're not going to go off, off, uh, go up against both of them, but we're going to pick one to side with either the, either the Reichspakt, the Socialists, or the Entente. Or you know, again, if Russia creates their own alliance, we'll um, think about that one. But um, we probably won't be able to uh, to fight one on one on the uh, like. In the seas with any of the major powers so i think what we might do is uh, a raiding fleet of submarines and also a mine laying fleet because mines do inflict damage onto ships and also do help um friendly ships like mines would be a major detriment to our submarines if we used our submarines for example to uh screen and keep um uh keep like a naval invasion at bay uh, those mines would be a major detriment in real life, but in this game it's actually not modeled. Because uh, uh, mines only affect enemies as far as I know, at least it was like that before the patch, which I believe nerfed mines because they were very broken. Basically submarines were completely broken a patch ago in uh, Man the Guns. Uh, you would use like only submarines as scouts because uh, they would try to engage... Um, the enemy and if the enemy was a submarine they would break off so you you know you'd use your submarines to find enemy submarines and you would take no losses might still work uh, but i think they might have nerfed their spotting or something um improved cruiser hull would probably be good yeah we're going to go for the th uh, the trade interdiction but no naval experience and i kind of want to i mean we're gonna have to go deep into it anyway, so we're not gonna get a hundred for each one of those. We're not gonna get that much naval experience. Statistics Central Bureau. Good. Coastal Artillery, that's the um, famous fortifications that sank one of uh, Germany's like four cruisers or something. I mean, famous in Norway, of course. I strongly doubt a lot of uh, international uh, viewers have even heard of it. In fact, I can't even remember what it's called. Um, but I assure you, it's famous. Upgrade the Army Air Service would give us uh, planes, which is really good. Like, for free. We could do that and train up an air wing. It would also let us uh, have a look at Chilean Ar Argentinian War and the Korean Uprising. So I've seen the Chilean Argentinian War so many times now in different playthroughs, and I did um, look at it in detail in the other uh, campaign, or like I actually paid attention to it. But this one didn't happen in the vast uh, campaign, I don't think, uh, the German Empire one. So the Korean Uprising. The rise of Japan in recent decades massively upset the status quo in East Asia, and the annexation of Korea in 1910 to the land of the rising sun was seen as indicative of a new order on the mainland. However, Japanese power is not limit limitless, and colonization efforts in Korea, Manchuria, and Formosa have led to great resentment against their occupiers, leading in this instance to open revolt on the Korean peninsula. 
Despite extensive efforts by the Japanese to crack down on the Korean minority in Transamur to dissuade exiles' efforts to gain foreign arms, open rebellion broke out in Korea today as Koreans seized, uh, seized strategic locations across the peninsula. No doubt the uh, imperial army will or imperial response will be swift, and few are holding out for a native victory. The Azure Hills will be bathed in blood. Southern Medley. Very, uh, very catchy song. We got Yi Eun with a generic orchestra, sadly. <clears throat> I hope, um, so the next rework or the next major patch uh, that's coming, which is probably going to be 0.10 for Kaiserreich, is going to rework China. And that was what I was like originally expecting and um, hoping to make the next playthrough. But then, you know, this Nordic stuff came as a complete surprise. So, I ended up doing Norway instead. I might even do, like, Finland or something uh, later on. Uh, or Sweden, for that matter. It would be kind of cool to do Iceland, though I'm not quite sure how, uh, fish or how, um, how effective it will be. I kind of think you need, uh, you know, to be a bit better to, uh, to do uh, an effective Iceland play playthrough. Yeah, I, I'm hoping they do something more with Korea, because currently it's very, like, bare bones. The Korean history is, is uh, very interesting, and especially the uh, Korean history in the um, in the war years, and... Um, oh, speaking of China, my uh, my phone just uh, turned itself off and on again. Uh, but yeah, the... Um, uh, the... Sorry, I was completely distracted by that. Just like a bright light in in my uh, in the corner of my eye. Uh, yeah, so the the like uh, Korean history in the um, uh, interwar years and the war years is bloody and quite interesting. And then obviously following the war, when uh, when it got partitioned and all that. Um, now nah, we're going to do the democratic mandate, get some political power, change up our government. Which, in fact, we can do now. So, we can, in fact, mobilize, um, like, even more. Because we're already at 55% world tension. Or... No, we're not going to need any of those. Yeah, I honestly think that the best option is to just go for... Uh, stronger mobilization. We could swap out our ministers, but I'll just do this for now. This is such a good tune. Also, someone did say that my microphone was quite low. Um, I looked into it and... I'm trying to figure out a way to, like, uh, sort that out on my end, other than just cranking everything up, which which is just going to destroy a lot of the mixing that I'm doing. Uh, like, you don't want to, like, crank gain up max, uh, so I'm going to try to figure out a solution, like an elegant solution, but I haven't found one yet. However, I think I might have found the root of the problem. Because YouTube does this thing with pretty much everything you upload, and that is that it makes a hard pass over all of it and just completely fucks everything up. Like it just fucks its shit up with uh, encoding and stuff, and that accounts or like that um, that um, applies to volume uh, or sorry audio, uh, video and all that. Like the bit rate affects the video quality and stuff. It's why I changed some of the encoding stuff on my um, on my recording uh, software. So. Earlier, in earlier videos, of, like when the game uh, sort of hanged like that a little bit, and when you zoomed in and out, the um, uh, the bit bitrate would get all kinds of like fucked up, and you would just see like tiny squares everywhere. Rebellion in Yemen. Rebellion against uh, Saudi Arabia, or no? The Velt Creek caused tremendous damage to the already struggling Ottoman Empire. Oh, so they were part of the Ottoman Empire then. Large sections of the Arabian Peninsula were cut off from the sublime ports rule for years due to succession or due to the successes. Oh boy, uh, successes of the Arabian uh, revolt. 
All the same, with the peace with honor, the Yemeni Viliat was to some extent brought back under Ottoman rule, at least in theory. Oh, so they were like puppeted, I think. Now the Mashriq declared war on the Ottoman Empire, so this is the uh, breakup of the Ottoman Empire that happens. Uh, usually it doesn't lead to a total collapse, it, it leads to a lot of lost territory. And then like an event, uh, you know, white peace. Dude, this shit scares me. Oh boy. <clears throat> we don't need the Tibetans anymore. Um, so they are like their ally or... No wait, they... Totalists in the Bharatiya commune. Yeah, we've seen this dude before. As a boy, um, Subhas Chandra Bose, a uh, Bose, 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 I'm not quite sure, once assaulted a British schoolmaster for defaming his beloved India. His expulsion thereafter left Bose within, or Bose within, please, an uh, almost rapid desire for vengeance. Shortly before the collapse of the British, oh my god, Mashriki kingdom has capitulated. Um, Shortly before the collapse of the British Raj, Bose had- Okay, I guess I won't read this then. I- <laughs> I tried. It was never meant to be. Dude, the German garrison here is probably like, what the fuck? Like, please, uh, please respect the borders. Oh, this song is chill. Yeah, so one like one uh, byproduct of the YouTube encoding is that if it's uh, if it uh, like senses even a single slight audio spike, I think it um, it just like app applies like a hard compression on everything, I think, and just tries to normalize all the volume. Which uh, I mean, it's good if you're like if you know literally nothing about audio mixing or have no like. Um, no external plugins ro running on your PC or something to like normalize the audio levels yourself. But I do, so I can do that myself. But YouTube does that for you. Which, uh, yeah. As we know, has some adverse effects. I need to read more about Nikolai Bukharin. Actually, don't know all that much about him. Norwegian documents transferred. A shipment from the Danish National Archives, the Danish Royal Library, and the Copenhagen University Library has just arrived. These are documents concerning Norway from the time Norway was part of Denmark. I, that could be more elegantly worded. I think that could be worded something like uh, these are documents for, uh, concerning Norway from the time of the Norwegian Danish Union, or the. Uh, yeah, something like that. Uh, by moving these to our national archives, our history will be just a little bit more complete. It's also like um, a thing that kind of really did happen. Uh, we had, for the longest time under Denmark, a um, kind of like all universities and all kind of like higher education had to happen in Denmark, which uh, really did affect our language quite a lot. It's why uh, if you write Denmark or Danish and write Norwegian, it's more similar than Swedish and, you know, the other two languages. Like, the uh, the current region might be um, uh, described potentially as a synthesis of Danish at the time and uh, the more Norwegian common uh, language. <clears throat> there was this whole, like, mess, uh, this, like, language... Uh, uh, movement that happened during the you know the period of every nation essentially like building their own national myth and uh, our like it, in the period of Norwegian nationalism here when we were trying to like define our identity you know break free from 
uh, our, you know, sweet brothers in Sweden and all that, uh, and Denmark before we got traded over to Sweden after the Napoleonic Wars. Um, like, during that whole period, we, um, uh, we ended up, like, basically ev inventing a language that was, try that was trying to be a synthesis of the language spoken by the common rural uh, population. And that language is now taught in schools, and it's also like, oh boy, counter revolution in Chile. It's also, uh, like, all over TV and stuff. And certain parts of the country do speak that sort of language. So you have to learn it if you, uh, you know, attend public schooling in Norwegian, uh, Norway. So technically, we have two languages, like, written languages in Norway. And I'm very bad at the other one. A counter revolution in Chile. Though Chile was once viewed as the most successful bastion of syndicalism and socialist values in South America, it appears that it is, uh, its regime stands no more. Clear failings in leadership during the war against Argentina and the dire strategic situation facing the nation today led to a cabal of military officials seizing power in Santiago. A number of key strong points in the city and across the country swiftly fell into their hands. Oh my god. This guy looks like a villain out of a Tintin comic. Francisco Diaz Valderrama. Where Chile's path now lies remain, uh, it remains uncertain, but it appears that another Junta rules in Latin America for now at least. The hammer and torch suffers a blow. He is Head of Government and Minister of Interior. Dude, so why he takes up two seats? He's got kind of a... Um, this guy going on as well. Just like our, uh, you know, guy down here. Portugal has joined the Entente. Fitting and not at all uh, uncommon, I don't think. I've seen it uh, several times, and I believe it happened in our... Um, in our German Empire playthrough. We've done the democratic mandate, now we can do a reaffirm neutrality, or we can do international relay. <laughs> this one gives us a bunch of bonuses to basically uh, protecting ourselves. But I don't know if that's a good idea. Because we need allies. And I think we will try for the Treaty of Stockholm. But of course, we need the Treaty of Stockholm. And I think the Treaty of Stockholm is entirely dependent. No, it isn't. It's event. Uh, it's event-based. Or, yeah. Yeah, it must be event-based, because... But the, the Swedish can't actually go down this path. We might have to just eat uh, Sweden. If, um... If Gustav decides to be silly, then we'll have to eat Sweden. Let's go with this one, because it does give a lot of uh, economic bonuses. And we can modify government again. Holy crap, I forgot how it feels like to have political power. Dude, I've been playing the German Empire for so long, I, I just... This feels so good. We want to have uh, uh, fire support, but we also do want to have entrenchment and stuff, because we are going to be holding, I think, a lot. We can't hold against Sweden, though. That's, uh, like, that is a fool's gambit. They have way more uh, troops than us, so we basically have to rely on diplomacy or... 
maybe relying on this guy to attack them. Like, if he attacks Sweden from the north, we could potentially swoop in from the west here and just uh, take the heartlands here. Uh, have a piece that sort of cuts them off at... Um, I mean, he would probably want Lapland, I think. Hiruna would go to him. Which is sad, because it does have a lot of iron. But who else would we need is this. Chromium. Yeah, the um, uh, Kirina would go to him, and then oh, possibly Lapland as well. Colonial reform in Middle Africa. Cool. So they're doing reformist stuff. And possibly breaking up Middle Africa. It appears the reform group has made the bold decision to overhaul Middle Africa's Byzantine system of rule, dominated by colonies, puppet kingdoms, and former British territories. Already plans have been set out establishing autonomous kingdoms for loyal African leaders under German stewardship. Cool thing. Mashrik Kingdom has capitulated. Persia. Oh yeah, the Iranians are attacking them as well. No Kurdish uprising though. That's a bit sad. Might want to do free trade, I'm not quite sure. The Oslo Analyzer is, uh, or Oslo, Oslo Analyzer is uh, complete. Today in a ceremony at the University of Oslo, Mr. Russeland unveiled the Oslo Analyzer. Based upon the work of Vannevar Bush and currently the most powerful differential analyzer in the world. Oh my god. The machine has 12 integrators and will provide our scientists with unrivaled computing power. So Norway is like computer gods here I don't know if it, like is this real did this thing happen in the original timeline I need to look this up who need Konrad Sousa or Alan Turing yeah oh I didn't actually see what the effect was uh, we probably got an idea yep research speed 2% up that's interesting so this is the um, this is the Enigma machine this right here uh, I think at least it looks like a, a German Enigma machine. It's got the like the um, uh, the code wheels or whatever. I've solved a couple of Enigma machine um, like um, uh, codes. Like I've I've cracked a bunch of codes with uh, a, a simulated version of a German naval Enigma machine from the early war. I think I don't remember how many wheels it had. I think it was four. But yeah, it's, uh, it's like a complicated uh, process, but it's actually quite easy to do it. But the, uh, you know, the, like, process behind it is it's way more complicated and way more, like, hard to uh, wrap your head around. Anyways, uh, I think, yeah, there's really nothing else to go for here. I mean, we might uh, go ahead and do this, but it's not going to have, like, it's not going to come into effect until we do this. And that's uh, still a while off. Uh, I think we're going to call it here, but before we do, casualties. Russian-Soviet war. Holy shit. One million Soviet losses. It seems the Soviet Union is going to lose, or Soviet Russia is going to lose in this one. Also, I completely failed to mention uh, this happened. Estonia was eaten by the Soviets. Yeah, uh, I think the Soviets are going to lose in this timeline. In our German Empire campaign, the Soviets won. So all of this is red in that campaign. And all of this, like, the borders are somewhere around here. And at some point, those German troops are going to have to march into Russia because they are syndicalists on our border. And, the you know, Union of Socialist American States also won. It's a whole mess, dude. And also the uh, communist one here. Yeah, uh, I was going to go over more of them. The Russians had lost 500,000. Small war. Significant. Russian Ottoman. Just started. 64,000 for the Cairo Pact and 56,000 for the Ottoman Empire. Joseon, Japanese war. Oh yeah, that one just started and the Koreans have already lost 88,000 uh, troops. Oh my god. Anarcho-Syndicalist war. Probably Spain, 100,000. 
CNT5, uh, 100,000 as well. Unionist Syndicalist War here. 500,000 and 232,000 uh, for the Union State. But I still think the Combined Syndicates of America currently are leading. Of course, that can turn at the head of, a, like, a, you know, at the turn on a dime, I think. Is, is that the um, expression? Idioms are kind of hard when you're not a native English speaker. Uh, Paci uh, Pacifican Unionist War. Very small losses between them. Sometimes they will agree to deal with the devil if the, you know, if Jack Reed is winning. Yeah, that's uh, that's about it. Oh, I accidentally unpaused, but that's fine. Yeah, the fuck it is done. Thank you for watching. Uh, in the like description down below, you'll find a Twitter, a Patreon, and a way to buy the game Hearthstone Four or its expansion from the humble bundle store, which will give me a cut if you use it, and it costs nothing extra for you, and you get a Steam key. So I mean, you get it on Steam if you want it there, anyways. Thank you for watching, and I will see you next time. Goodbye.